What is up, everybody? Uh, I am sitting uh, in a hotel room, and I have a lot of time on my hands, and I realize it's been a minute. Uh, I put that as the title of like the last video I did, uh, and, I, and I wanted to continue down the study of Matthew. My goal was to do something every day, uh, record something. Didn't do great on that goal. But I've been doing a lot since uh, my last video. Uh, I've been helping with a church out in Solomon. Uh, I do another YouTube channel or YouTube thing with uh, my fellow bald brother and I. Uh, call two bald guys and Jesus, but I, I didn't want to stop. You see, I got like sodas and snacks in the back there. It's not for me. I don't really drink soda, uh, but it's uh, for some other people. But um, and so I wanted to just take this time that I had to keep studying through with you through the Bible. So if you've got it, and if you haven't caught up, or, or if, you, if you're not sure where we are. Or in Matthew chapter 9, and we would saw and seen the, the last time, it's been a while, this is uh, COVID had started and all this stuff was going on, and I'm still, it's still happening. Uh, the world is still in turmoil, but the message of Christ doesn't stop. So I had some time on my hands and I wanted to take a few minutes, 10 minutes only, to, to spend some time in God's Word with you and hope that you come along with this. So read through Matthew um, on in the church that I'm preaching at in Solomon on Sundays. We're studying through John, and it very cor it cor correlates really, really well with what we're going to talk about today. Uh, but I will be... That's a whole other thing. Go read that in John. Um, it's a powerful thing. But what I wanted to continue with is this study in Matthew as we're reading through. Matthew picking up where we've ended, or we looked at the time of the two blind uh, men. Now let's just read that so we caught up, and then I want to continue out in verse 23. Now, since last time, I don't know if you saw these bad boys, but I've got glasses. So let's uh, start at verse 27, it says, As Jesus went from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on me, son of David. When he had, done, when he had gone indoors, and I pointed this idea, I think I did, I should probably go back and watch it, but if I didn't, the idea that, that Jesus was uh, having them come to him and, and even waited to this idea for when, they, when Jesus got into the home, they were calling out to him, Have mercy on us, son of God. When he had gone indoors, so that's this idea that he went indoors and he, and he had him come to him, which I thought was a very interesting thing. It's, it's interesting to me. And look what he says. It says, when he had gone indoors, the blind men came to him and he asked them, do you believe, this is Jesus speaking, do you believe that I am able to do this? The thing that they were asking. And they say, yes, Lord, they replied. And he touched their eyes. And said, according to the faith, your faith, let it be done to you. Now, there's more to it. Keep reading. It says, and their sight was restored. They were blind and they could see. We can't miss this idea that the, the prophecy says this will happen. Jesus is fulfilling prophecy, but more so. The miracle of Christ in them was manifesting out of them. And, and, and this is, you can now see your faith has done this. So they went and restored them. Jesus warned them sternly, it says, the rest of 30, verse 30. See that no one knows about this. Now, interestingly, I don't know what, what's going on in their minds. We don't know. But if we keep reading... I don't know if they listened as well as maybe they could, or here's my question. He might not, they might not have said specifically, outwardly spoken, but they did let their actions show a difference. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Let's read 31, but then I'm going to pick up in verse 32. It says, but they went out and spread the news about him all over the region. So first they're starting to, they're, they're spreading the news. It doesn't say 
terribly how it says they spread the news, but they spread the news out that could have been through their, their action. They were blind. These people were known by then. I don't know. But I do think the next verse implies a part of the spreading. Let me explain. Keep reading. It says, while they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed, uh, sorry, so verse 32, while they were going out, a man who was demon-possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the man who had been mute spoke. Well, let's look at this one more time. While they were going out, a man was brought to them. This man didn't come to them. This man was brought to them. Who were they brought? Well, if we read in context, these were the blind men. Best I can see. I don't know 100%. Scripture doesn't make it totally clear there. But it implies it really well. What was the message they were doing? They were going out and bringing people to Jesus. They're sharing the good news. And so while they were going out, those the, the two blind men, a man was brought, was demon-possessed. Did they have maybe some compassion, being two blind men, being two men cast out? Could they have some empathy to this demon-possessed man who was mute? found that very interesting. And I did find it interesting as well that Jesus, the scripture doesn't tell us how Jesus or what the process and healing, but a while again, let's look, 32. It says, while they were going out, a man who was demon possessed and could not talk was brought to Jesus, verse 33. And when the demon was driven out, doesn't say how or why or, or, or the process that happened, the man who had be, been mute spoke. Now keep reading because we're going to see how contrast of what it is to have been touched by Jesus. So again, the man spoke. The middle part of that verse, it says, the crowd was amazed and said, nothing like this has ever been done in Israel. So there's a group of people who are seeing what Jesus is doing and praising this idea. They're impressed. They're, they're overwhelmed. There's some uh, awe going on here. But 34 is still a verse there. Keep reading. The Pharisees said, the religious said, the ones who, who have been saying, look, this Jesus thing isn't real. In fact, the continuous, we won't spend time in it at this moment, but the continuous verse, uh, it, it, it digs in that Jesus said there's very few who are willing to work with him in this. But verse 34 says, but the Pharisee says, it is by the prince of demons that he drives out demons. So, in our just short 10 minutes, we're only two minutes left, I want to show you this idea. That was, we're looking in it and we see the, the change in the, in the two blind men. They were able to see. So what could they just not stop doing? It's telling people about God. And not only that, but they're, being, they're telling people and then showing people who God was. They were bringing people to Jesus. And then we see the driving out of the demon-possessed man. And that's the emphasis that I want to leave you with today. Because the world is full of evil. And, and, and so often we can sit back and say, you know, I, I just don't know. I, I don't know if I can stand up for Christ. Is, is that the message of your life? That you just that when you feel the, the healing or an understanding that God has changed your life, God has, has made you, got, you were blind, but now you can see? Do you go out and show? Well, what about the demon-possessed man? Do you see that, that after he was freed from the, the demons, he had to start speaking? It's interesting. Right now, I'm, I'm stuck in a hotel. I'm being stuck in a hotel. It, there's moments of heart. It's hard to, to do ministry, but I've had privilege, some of the people here, to sit and talk about God in this ministry. Now, I could be quiet and say, look, I'm, I'm here uh, and I'm stuck here right now, so I'm just going to do my thing. But why would we? If freed from the bonds of sin, why are we not speaking out? Is such a time as this that we should speak out? To share and tell people what, what God's done in, in our life. And, and again, like I said, this parallels so much 
into John and 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 I hope and encourage you if you if you don't have a church man okay I'll advertise a bit come out to Solomon and, and I'd love for you to, to come and see because the power of your testimony the power of what it is to speak changes lives we're gonna be looking in John chapter 4 in a couple of weeks because I won't be there this Sunday but the next Sunday we're gonna be looking at John chapter 4 and the idea of the power of the, the the woman at the well her testimony brought a city to God and maybe church maybe our testimony maybe we speak out for for righteousness we speak out for holiness we speak out for being the hands and feet of God and we do it from wherever we're at maybe that's what we're called to do we know that read the rest of the verses I won't talk about it today but the following verses Jesus even speaks out to say there will be few who want to work with me I hope you're having a great time. And I can't guarantee that I'm going to do these videos all the time. And I really enjoy the ones that I do out in uh, Two Bald Guys and Jesus. So I still got to do that. I haven't done that in a while because I've uh, been isolated for a minute. But I haven't got to see my friend. He's been traveling and we haven't gotten together. But I really encourage you to speak out. The power of the testimony of what God's done in your life is the message people need to hear. We're not afraid of COVID. We're, we're not afraid of riots. But we have a prince, and he's a prince of peace. And that's who we follow. So that's the little part here in Matthew chapter 9. It's It's been a minute since I've got to speak through it, so it's uh, it, it's got to get back to being normal again. I can't wait to win over 10 minutes like normal, but I do hope that you're having a blessed time. Uh, I'll be doing more of these because I got a little bit more time on my hands right now, but I hope that you guys get into your word, read the rest of this in John third, uh, Matthew, sorry, Matthew 9, 35 and following. And, and we get to see that God's calling a ministry for you and for his disciples. He's going to spend some time with them, sending them uh, out on their journey. I hope you have a blessed day and we'll see you next time. Read your Bible. Bye guys.